Dear everybody, today we're going to be thinking about remembering. And as I sit here in the days around bonfire night, you can probably hear the noise of fireworks still going off. And this reflection is due to go out to our children and young people at St Andrews United Reformed Church on Sunday the 8th of November, Remembrance Day. And rather than stopping and starting for the noise of fireworks, I'll just let them continue in the background because they are part of the story. This time of year, we do a lot of remembering, though perhaps some of you slightly younger members of our congregation and followers may not realise how much remembering we actually do. Last week, we saw the end of October and the beginning of November. And this year, as with so many other celebrations, everything's been rather different. But people still got dressed up and carved pumpkins or turnips, depending on where you come from. And we thought about Halloween. Or to give it its name, if we look at the Christian calendar, All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Day and then we think of the days of All Souls and All Saints. They are three festivals which aren't celebrated so much now where we remember people who have died and give thanks for their life and their witness to Christians throughout the years and in Mexico they celebrate with something called the Day of the Dead and in normal years they would have taken a meal to the cemetery where their loved ones are buried and they would have had a meal with the family and they would have introduced their children to the ancestors and they would have celebrated and told their ancestors about all the things that had happened. I should imagine the Day of the Dead was very different in Mexico this year. If you want to try a Mexican craft, ask a grown-up to show you how to make a Mexican God's Eye, a symbol of protection for Mexican families. So that was all the days around Halloween and then later in the week we moved on to the 4th and 5th of November. The 4th of November is traditionally known as Mischief Night here in Yorkshire and it's really the only county that I know of where Mischief Night is remembered and we think about a man called Guy Fox who was one of the people involved with laying gunpowder under the Houses of Parliament so that he and his friends and many others had the right, or the, as they saw it, the right to overthrow Parliament so that they could worship God in the way that they thought was the appropriate way to do it. And of course, Guy Fox came from New York and he went to school in New York a long time ago. And then we have Bonfire Night. And perhaps this year you've had a few, few fireworks in the garden, or perhaps you've just stood at a window and watched them. Perhaps you've drawn a picture, a sparkly picture with uh, black card and coloured cutting outs or tinsel or glitter or some kind of sparkly colours to represent fireworks. And then, always at this time of year, the noise of the fireworks leads me to thinking about soldiers and others who gave up their lives or fought in the wars because I would imagine the noise of the fireworks going off is a bit like the noise of the gunfire that we remember when we think about World War I and World War II. And I want to tell you the story of two people. And the first one is on a photograph. It's a really old photograph. I hope that's not too out of focus. But right in the middle, there's a lady with a cross on her finger on her apron and then underneath there's a lady with glasses on and she's my great aunt, my great aunt Edie and she served as a nurse or a VAD, a voluntary aid detachment member during World War I. This photograph was taken in 1916 when she would have been about 19, 20 years old, something like that and she, I don't know if she ever fought in France but she certainly worked in London in a hospital caring for wounded soldiers from the First World War. Edie got engaged 
to an officer, but sadly they never married because her fiance was killed during World War One. So on Sunday and again on the 11th of November, she will be somebody that I will be thinking of. And I'm now going to share a story for you from the Old Testament and it's from the first book of Samuel and it's chapter 17 and it's a story about a soldier who kind of fought against the odds. And it starts off by telling us about the king who was king at that time. Saul, the king, used sometimes to feel very miserable and no one could cheer him up. His servants thought that it might help if he were to listen to music. So Saul told them to find someone to come and play for him. And they told him about David, a shepherd boy who could play beautifully on the harp. So David was sent for and when the king felt unhappy, David would take his harp and he would play music until Saul was cheered up and well again. And those songs are the songs that we know in the book of Psalms. And perhaps you can think of one or two. The most famous is probably the Lord's my shepherd, Psalm 23. One day the Philistines came to fight against the Israelites. They gathered their armies together upon a hill and Saul and all the men of Israel drew up in a battle array upon another hill. So there was a valley between them. Then there came from out of the Philistines camp a man who was a giant. He was over nine feet high named Goliath of Gath and he wore a glittering coat of mail and carried a great big spear. He challenged the Israelites to let one man come and fight with him. And they said if that one Israelite beat the Philistine soldier um, Goliath, then they would go away. So they came and shouted and yelled at them morning and evening for 40 whole days. But no man among the Israelites dared go out in flight. Then one day David left the sheep on the hillside and came to bring food to his brothers and other people who were in the king's army. And while he was in the camp, he saw Goliath and heard them challenge him from the valley. Who is this Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? asked David indignantly. They told him. So David went before King Saul. I'll go and fight with this Philistine, he said. Saul gave him shining armour and a sword, but David didn't trust them, for he hadn't learnt how to use them properly. But he believed in the power of God, because once when he was looking after his sheep, a bear had come after them, and once a lion, but God had given him the strength to overcome them and not be afraid. So David decided to take the weapons that God had given him, or taught him how to use, to use to fight the Philistine. He went down to the river and chose five smooth stones which he put in his little purse and took his shepherd's sling in his hand and he went out to meet Goliath. When the Philistine saw the fair-faced boy, he despised him and jeered, calling out, Come to me and I'll feed you to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. David called back, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield but I come to you in the name of the Lord God, King of hosts. Then as Goliath came near to fight David, David went to meet him. He put a stone into the slingshot as he went along and threw it with great force. And the same idea, if you want to think of a 21st century kind of equivalent, would be to think about the kind of um, scoops that we use to throw a tennis ball for a dog. We can throw a tennis ball a little way, but if you put it into one of those scoops, you can throw it an awful lot harder and an awful lot faster. And when the little stone hit the giant in the middle of his forehead, he fell over to the ground. David ran and stood upon the great Philistine and he knew that he was dead. The enemy fled when they saw their champion killed and the Israelites shouted and chased them out of the land. Saul was very pleased with David and made him captain over all the soldiers and they cheered him loudly. Of course, wars and battles result in terrible injuries and hurt to people and we should never forget that. But we, at this time of year, we remember and we give thanks for the things that people 
gave up their lives that we might live in freedom to have the chance to do all the things that we would normally enjoy doing. This year, we won't be able to gather in church as usual for our two minutes of silence for Remembrance Day. We're encouraged to stand on our own doorsteps and just like we clapped for carers earlier in the year, to stand on the doorstep at 11 o'clock and stand in two minutes of silence, which is quite a long time. But back a hundred years ago, that was the first year that we did this. In 1920, 1919 and 1920, the King asked everybody to stand for two minutes in silence to give thanks for all the people who fought in World War I and hadn't come home or had come home badly injured. And this year, we can't all gather together in one place to do it, so we're encouraged to do it on our own doorsteps. And perhaps before you do that, you might be able to make something like this, a poster to go in the window. I know it's back to front, I'm not good enough to do the mirror image. But I've just simply taken a whole load of red poppy shapes out of red paper, and I'm going to glue them round into a circle. They're all sticking together, never mind anything else. I'm just going to stick them onto the shape I've made to look like a poppy wreath that will go in my window to give thanks for everybody, my Aunt Edie, who came home, although her fiancé didn't. And I'm just going to take a black marker pen and I'm just going to draw the circles in the middle. all the way around. Or if you want to have a go at making something else, why not make a poppy pinwheel to go in the ground and if it blows round it might remind you of somebody who served. You need a piece of square paper and you need to fold it in half. It's like, there's one I've prepared earlier so it's easy to do. And then open it out and fold it in half the other way. And then take scissors and get mum or dad to help you if you're not very good with scissors cut down about halfway down each side you don't want to cut right to the middle you want to leave a bit to turn over and then you take the corners and you bend them into the middle all of them together and you need a pin to go through them all one Two. Sorry folks, this isn't going to be very easy to show you till I've stuck them all together. Three. Yes, it will go. Honest. Four. That's the fourth one. Into the middle. Right through the back. I cheated because I pinched the holes in early. Right through the back of it, can you see? And then take a pencil or a stick with your drawing pin. And you've got a pinwheel pop in. If you don't put it on too tightly, I put it on quite firmly. In a breeze that will blow around. And it reminds us of the poppies in France blowing in the breeze and the wind um, where the soldiers had fought. Excuse me. <coughs> so there's a couple of ideas of things to do. But let's just ask you, as usual, once you've made something, and as you can see, I've made a felt poppy as well, send them in to the usual address, media at standrews.cc, and share the kind of things that you've done to celebrate Remembrance Day as we give thanks for all these people that we've thought about associated with Halloween and All Souls and All Saints, with Bonfire Night and Guy Fox with his desire with along with his friends to worship the God they believed in in the way they wanted to, and all the people that gave us freedom at Remembrance Day. So let's just be still and say a quiet prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are able to remember so many different things and so many different people who have lived before us and have stood up for what they believe in. Help us to stand up for what we believe in and always to be true and faithful 
disciples of yours. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our brother and our fellow disciple. Amen. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.